It, it is true that the historical origin of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith is very complex, and largely it, it emerged from the institutionalization of the Inquisition. However, it has evolved, and that's the, the story is too, too long to tell here. It's fascinating, but it has evolved, especially in an important direction, in the pontificate of Paul VI after the Vatican Council, when to the, uh, to the uh, mission of the correction of error was added the promotion of the faith. Now, the promotion has turned about out to be really the most important uh, element in our mission because it encompasses correction. I'm Augustine de Noia, Archbishop Augustine de Noia. I'm a Dominican from the United States, St. Joseph's province. I came here almost 20 years ago to work in the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. So let me give you an example. We, when we published a few years ago a document on cremation, you know, that is to say how to deal with after death the body if you're not, if you're not going to bury it, we were both promoting the faith, that is uh, to reaffirm the understanding of the sacredness of the body and of the importance for the body to be intact in one place and in virtue of the resurrection of the body to come. However, in teaching that, we also corrected a lot of errors. For example, the practice of, is of dispersing the, uh, the ashes in the ocean or from a, on the beach or dispersing parts of the ashes to different members of the family. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. The, the complete loss of this sense of the sacredness of the body and therefore of the ashes. The, the idea of permitting the cremation had been, was, was after a thousand years, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith in 1966 permitted cre cremation in certain circumstances. However, it got terribly out of control, and now there are a lot of practices which are erroneous, but pastorally speaking, very bad. And so, so the Congregation promoting a vision of the body to be risen in Christ is also correcting errors all the time. The congregation has the competence, they call it, for both doctrinal matters and disciplinary matters as they regard the sacrament, the holiness of the sacraments, okay? So that there was always these two um, areas. <laughs> People say, well, why is, why is the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith dealing with sex abuse by clerics? And the reason is that from ancient, from early, early times in its history, the, the holiness of the sacraments and therefore of the priesthood has been part of our brief. So the discipline of the sacraments means also any, any violations of the sacramental seal, for example, or, or a violation of the body and blood of Christ. It's, it's, it's morals from the perspective of faith. That's why we're, we're doing that. The problem with the word heresy is that it is used to identify in popular parlance all departures from the faith. But in fact, in Catholic doctrine, heresy is strictly speaking only it's restricted to the de denial or false teaching of de fide, whatever, what is revealed. So if you deny that the Blessed Trinity is, uh, that the persons of the Blessed Trinity are really distinct, that is heresy. Many other things are just errors, all right? Now, heresies, in fact, heresies are widespread. 
but they're, in, they're generalized. You see, there's, this is what I meant before about the confusion. There's so much confusion. So, so a few years ago now, almost 20, the congregation published an art, a, a document on, called Dominus Jesus on the uniqueness of Christ's role in salvation. Well, you would say to yourself, why does that, is there a problem? But of course, there is a huge problem because many people think of Christ as one of, one of many saviors, you see. That is an example of how widespread cultural, you might say the cultural delusion, delusion, uh, delusion uh, of the faith uh, requires a tremendous amount of teaching, although it would be hard to find a single heretic who is teaching that. We are not like the Federal Bureau of Investigation, so we do not look for error or problems. They're usually referred to us by bishops. That's the primary way. Although it could be by the ordinary faithful, because we read all the mail we get. We get an awful lot of mail, you can imagine. Big sacks. So, and, but we never act unless we have made contact with the bishop and say, we've received this information. What can you tell us about it? Or the nuncio, of, you know, in, in France or in the United States. We have a lot of contact with the nuncio. So that's how things get on our radar screen, primarily through, uh, through referral on the part of the bishops. Very often, if I may say this, it's important, we have been encouraging the bishops' conferences to deal with these matters on a local, because every conference has, especially all the big ones, a doctrinal commission. So it is the bishops themselves, I mean, you know, but as it happens, because the bishops are very happy <laughs> to, to send the problems over here, you know, but we are encouraging them to take care of these issues uh, themselves. So if we're dealing with an individual or a book of an individual, which is clearly heretical, and that has happened since I've been here, I don't want to mention the names, then we have either the so-called ratio agendi or the procedure. Suppose that someone is, a, a book is, is accused of being heretical. Then we send that book right away to one of our consultors, a theologian, and then he might write back and say, no, it's not, it's fine, or yes, it's a problem. That's the first part of the procedure. Is there a problem? Once we determine that there is a problem, then we notify the superior bishop or religious superior or local bishop, if it's a lay person, of this. And then we, then we begin, uh, it's a long, the, 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 the longer procedure is very long because it gives an awful lot of opportunity to the accused, if you will, to defend himself or herself. The, if the matter is ex particularly grave or important that it should be addressed in a timely way, then we would use, oh, well, I mean, a person, a person, there are penalties, you know, so a person could be asked never to write any more books on this subject. And if a person is declared a heretic, that's really, that's very serious, although I, I don't know, if in my time, it's never happened. But so you, there are various measures that can be applied. It's difficult. Now you understand we have, there's a fundamental problem here, a huge problem culturally, because the idea of censoring anything, any book, is absolutely foreign to us, right? I mean, certainly in France, the United States, any, any, any uh, uh, civilized, I mean, well-educated country regards censorship as an abomination. <laughs> to the, the faithful should have the right to have the faith presented to them in an authentic manner. So com a community that is incapable of correcting uh, errors that are directly um, deleterious, let's say, to its identity, will eventually dissolve. You see what I mean? And every community, even every community seems to have uh, measures, procedures, by which to preserve its, in, as much as possible, the authenticity of its beliefs. As Dominicans, we know this, okay? St. Dominic believed that if you had bad ideas, it was bad for you, bad for your soul, okay? 
and so the, so that so you cannot speak about being pastoral without being true to the proclamation of the faith. So if you, God forbid, you have cancer and you go to the doctor and he says, no, you're fine, don't worry about it. You go home and eventually you die because he didn't tell you the truth, you see? So this connection between true doctrine and true Christian life, truth in this sense, is, in, in, is like this. So one of the things that the Pope is saying there is that, that the importance of the congregation for the doctrine of the faith is not simply theoretical to achieve a certain clarity in the formulation of doctrines. Uh, uh, uh. It's, for, it's for salvific, it's, the salvific. it's a salvific understanding of the truth of doctrine, yes. Thank you.